So, in a typical day in a school, the bell rang, and we all the students just ran to the field, and people were playing. And a friend, my friends and I just dug three holes in the ground, and we start playing B, which is a marble game. And there were a few others who were betting on who's winning. And the game continued, but the conversation turned about a boy who were rumored that he's studying all the time. And at that time, I was like, why is he studying? And when, uh, why am I going to, why should I study when I can play? Because I know that that one, I can really feel it. And I couldn't understand uh, why should I study. Because gambling was something that I can feel. And uh, also just playing street games was something that I really, that excites me. Of course, at that time, I couldn't answer that question. Uh, and my parents, of course, didn't want that. I'm very much obsessed about gambling, so they tried to give me their point of views about you know, why I should study. But it took five years, and fortunately, or unfortunately, that just before finishing high school, uh, I had a nightmare, and I wanted something to, to keep me awake in that night, because my friends are sleeping, they cannot play. And I thought, why shouldn't I? I mean, I just started reading, and I realized I don't have, I mean, that one will keep me awake. So I understood that you could study just, you know, to escape a nightmare. So that led me to university and, um, you know, why I'm here today. But there was one fundamental thing that I was always coming back to these kind of stories is that sometimes the point of views that we have available, the answers and solutions available to us may not be, just even to the innocent questions like that, may not be uh, suitable for our children. So. What I'm going to argue is that actually, instead of trying to give the solutions available to us, instead we should be focused more about the method, the strategies that we get to those answers. So in uh, arguing that, I'm going to give two other notable events in my life that actually uh, influenced me very deeply. Um, so I also, you know, after two decades of realization, actually, what I was doing when I was gambling was statistics, which I'm doing now, and aerodynamics, physics, law and the rules that we were, that were set in the game and other things. So my parents, had they known, actually they could have just easily turned me in that direction. So the other event that really influenced my career was this, this question, how old is the world? I mean, at that time, world universe was the same for me. And the two available uh, solutions and point of views were my parents were religious, Christian, there is a Bible version of it. And then there is also the school, which is carbon dating. And one is very simple, I don't feel it, and the other one is complicated. Neither of them were really answering the, the kind of uh, point of view I want to get. So my nightmare, the university. At the university, I had an opportunity to observe the moon and the star uh, through my own eyes. And that was really a, a kind of aha moment. And I say, I knew that the moon is there and the, you know, Jupiter is there, but I never thought they are exactly as what they say in the books and you know, what I saw in the, uh, in the pictures. So that kind of belief then translated into, oh, the stars, you know, that I was told that the lights come from, you know, millions and billions of light years. So if that is the case, then the, the world, the universe must be older, right? So that was really the kind of sp the spark that I got into astronomy and then followed that dream and got into cosmology. So I'm a cosmologist and I study this uh, beautiful map. And this is the uh, uh, cosmic microwave background map from the Planck satellite which is a European Space Agency satellite, I'm a, a part of it. This gave us most of the information we know about the universe, its birth and its uh, uh, evolution from the beginning to now. So, but the thing is that even if we have a lot of understanding about the beginning and the evolution of the universe, we have fundamental problems like dark matter, dark energy, which is 95% of the, uh, the cosmos. And we need to look into this map if there is any hint that, that tells us uh, towards that direction, and I work for uh, an anomalies, trying to see like, if our model is really describing exactly the data that we are, uh, that we are looking. So, and then the other very fundamental, very dear to me is another question is that, you know, why Africa is the way it is? It's like it has been always in me, and there has been a lot of solutions you know, available to me 
it's like from climate kind of uh, point of view and others, but none of them are actually uh, um, getting into me. And so now, having passed through and nurtured all the techniques, of, you know, the statistical tools and everything else that I have acquired, I can now look at exactly the same I was doing in, in, the, in the cosmic microwave background. I can look at now satellite images of the Earth to figure out that problem as well. So that's what I am doing also as, uh, as my uh, research. So what I want to say just uh, is a point of, is that some, it is, I strongly believe, and that's why I carry it with me in a class and in outreach programs that I'm participating, is that it is better and it's wise to actually focus on teaching the strategy instead of the answer. And the best strategy we have that we have tasted in time is that the scientific method. So we should be focusing on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Yebebal Fantai.